Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. This is Cookie Joy, and you're listening to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. As always, we are your hosts, I'm Rudy V, along with Anthony Ray. First and foremost, we want to thank our producer, Mark Winter and Pet Life Radio for giving us the opportunity. And we want to thank you guys for always listening in and making the show what it is today. Guys, we're so excited about this show. We have some wonderful guests coming on. We have a husband and wife team, Victoria Chalaya and Rico Stoll from YouTube's Naughty Styles. These guys started a YouTube channel back in 2015 where they're touring and showing beautiful boats and yachts, liveaboard yachts ranging from as little as $100,000 to millions and millions of dollars. They themselves live on their own yacht and they lived on their yacht with their wonderful dog, Marco, who this show is dedicated to. Before we introduce them, we want to make sure that Anthony did his homework and he studied his nautical lingo. Anthony, did you study your nautical lingo? I don't know nautical lingo. I told you, I told you we were going to have Victoria and Rico on the show. So it's very important that you did your nautical lingo. So I'm just supposed to assume I got to morph into somebody nautical just overnight. Well, I I, I gave you a homework, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to test you. Um, Anthony, what's a stern? When someone's angry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh nautical not the nautical the nautical oh. <laughs> no and it's the, right. it's 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 oh for it, one it's the back of the boat back it's boat. the back of the boat okay um what's the what's the bow what's the bow After, uh, uh, when you <laughs> no no this, i think it's the front of the boat it's the front of the boat i keep forgetting we're doing right. i right. keep forgetting we're doing nautical terms Okay. What the, obviously? What's the salon? Drink it here, then. <laughs> it's, no, man. It's the living room of the boat. The salon is the, the, li- salon. the living. Room's the living room is called a see, salon. Guys, nautic, nautical nautical lingo is completely different. It's it's not the same. So it's just not the same. So okay, okay. what's a what's a, a en suite? Oh, it's from some real nice hands of chocolate. But nope. they're but on a boat. No, no, wrong again, wrong again. Uh, uh-huh. I'm 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 pretty sure it's a bathroom off of the master bedroom. Uh, but you know what, guys, I'm not too sure about this stuff either. So why don't we go to commercial? And when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna ask the professionals all this stuff and find out more about live aboard yachts and uh, and also uh, living with your dog or your pet on on a boat. So uh, when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it all together. Okay, stay tuned. We got a great show. Hey, guys, welcome back to Groomer Humor. Without further ado, let's introduce our guests today. We have Victoria Chalaya and Rico Stoll from Naughty Styles. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for, yeah, having, thanks for us. having us. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're so excited about this show because, again, you know, as we talked, uh, you know, you, you, you came up on my recommend and, uh, it, you know, and it, it, like I said, at first I saw, you know, naughty styles. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> what could this be? You know, a little naughty and then, oh, boats. Okay. Also very, very cool. So, uh, uh, you know, needless to say, we, 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 we clicked on it and uh, we've been binge watching you for the longest time. Um, but we, we want to get a little personal if you don't mind. Um, because we know that Rico's a DJ, right? We all know that about Rico. And I'm just wondering, you know, did, you know, Victoria enter the club one day and I don't know, just say, you know, who's the DJ, you know, <laughs> was, 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 was Rico just kind of like ready to drop a beat and say, yo, that girl right there, I'm going to buy a boat with her someday. What's her name? How, how did you guys meet? How oh God. Uh, so Rico's cousin actually introduced us. Um, and we met on the movie set, uh, TV set, TV actually, set, yeah. TV show. And um, Rico was running lights and sound um, for the location that we were shooting at. And I was acting in in um, in the TV show. And his, you know, was at lunch and his cousin just introduced us. And we um, finally, when we um, went out like two weeks later, mm-hmm. I think we went out on our first date. 
Wow. It was like a lunch date. And we basically closed the restaurant. They kicked us out because we were there for so long. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was it was kind of interesting because he gave me like this mixed CD. When we said bye, right? Yeah, yeah. we're saying bye. He was like hanging onto my car. He didn't, didn't want to admit it. I didn't hang on. And then he gave me his mixed <laughs> CD, like a CD from, not mixed CD for me or anything, just a basically a recorded set from, you know, from um, one of the clubs. Yeah. clubs. And I love electronic music. I, you know, it's just a big thing for me. So uh, for like 10 days, I didn't listen to it because I totally liked him. And I like, we clicked and we had such a connection. And I was like, which is like, what if, what if I just absolutely like, he has like a weird taste in house music and it's just, what if it sucks? Like, what is he just bad, you know? And so for what 10 if? days, I didn't listen to it. And then nothing. We kept like ch- talking and texting. And then one of my friends who I went to like a whole bunch of raves with. And, you know, it's like my basically my clubbing buddy. He was like, so what's up with this DJ guy? You know, like, are you going out with him again? I said, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I like him. But like, he's like, well, did you listen to his, his stuff? I said, no, I'm just like so nervous. I don't. What if I what if I hate it? He's like, I'll just <laughs> please listen to it. So I did. I I put it in my car and it was like 15 minutes in. And I was like, this is weird. We literally like the same music. It's wow. just crazy strange. Same style of music, like same type of house music. And yeah, and from that point, and finally won. I was able to get a second. Day. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you and you, you definitely weren't hanging on to the car, right, Rico? No. No. I, no. I, I, might, I might have leaned against it. <laughs> That's resting. That's just resting. That's resting. Resting. That's, That's, That's resting. 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So we didn't meet at the yeah. club, it's... but that was kind of it. And then I went and saw him DJing, and yeah, from yeah. that point, it was it was it was quick. Well, you know what, yeah. guys, uh, we we love a good love story. And that's why we asked the question, because here's the thing when when and I think I speak for a lot of your viewers and being a viewer myself, um, it really shows through on your YouTube channel. It really does. You know, just your, your chemistry together, your com- your connection, your your respect for one another when you're doing your YouTube channel. It really, really shows through, honestly. And it's not just the boats, the the the, the yachts, the boats they're beautiful but i think a lot of people are watching you guys so keep keep doing that because it really is thank you yeah yeah. thanks guys thanks for adding out all thanks for adding out all the bickering and stuff you got it it. you got it you got to put them in the outtakes you got to put them in the outtakes just be careful when you press record that's all yeah (laughs) i do make him look real good in the videos for sure rico's the man (laughs) i think he's cute I think he's adorable. I'd sail with him. Anyway. Thank you. You know what? <laughs> Listen, if you're going to sail with anybody, you want it to be Rico, because I know that, you know, if you and me had a yacht, we, Rico, we're going to need your cell phone number because yeah. when we buy our yacht, you're going to be getting that call in the middle of the night. Yo, Rico, uh, it's not starting. <laughs> and I'm sure the answer yeah. is going to be something like, yeah, hey, Rudy, why don't you press the start button? And it's yeah. gonna be like, oh, you yeah. know what Rico did? It's sorry to bother you. Say hi to Victoria. You're making you're making fun of it. I've I've, I've you know <laughs> have done yacht maintenance and management for I don't know how many years now, eight years or something, or maybe a little longer. And um, yeah, I've I've received plenty of these calls. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course you have. Of course you have. Yeah. So you won't be surprised when we call. That's good. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were a little nervous about that. <laughs> But it's also to the point that you've experienced it yourself of um, in the very in beginning, the beginning. Yeah. our journey, you know, it was oh. like, he's yeah. done some stuff. And I'm like, just call a friend who knows everything. And he's yeah. like, no, nope, no, no, I got I'm it. Right. I got it. I changed the part. I do all this work. And it's then still not working. it's still not working. And then turns out a simple breaker somewhere, which he didn't think exists. <laughs> no, Victoria, I was like, it's like, did you? This, did you check a break off? There's probably a fuse. I was like, no, there's not. I'll, I'll fix it. And then I changed the whole, it was a sump pump for a shower drain. And I, I, I bought the new box. I put a whole new box. In. I wired everything up. Still not working. I was like, man, like, what did I do wrong? And then at some Just point. read the manual. She's like, she's like you really sure that there's no breaker? And fair enough, of course, there was a stupid volt, 12 volt breaker panel with, with push breakers. You know, you just push it back in and fair enough, it works right away. Oh, uh, man. It's so and stupid. And bingo. You know, but here's the thing. Like, Victoria, you find stuff. 
we, we I know one of my favorite parts of your videos is you finding the storage like you, you find, <laughs> fascinating. I get all jazzed up every time you do it because it's like it's it, it's like you, you look like you're discovering stuff the owner didn't even know was there. Yeah, I know it's, it's so exciting. It's, it's like it splits 50 50. Nah, it's not. It's like 40 60. I think 40 percent of the people. Nah, it's probably 30. 30 percent of the people say don't open everything. Everything, and then there's like 70 percent. They're like open, 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 yeah. and just. Yeah. And sometimes you really find stuff that you didn't know is there. And for us, it's, you know, we don't, we pre-tour the boat, I would say like 75% of the time, we will look at it Quickly, real quick yeah. just to see which way we're going to tour it because we pre we do like one take, you know, kind of like you guys really? do with podcasts and maybe yeah. just a little bit of what you see in outtakes, but that's it. Like mm -hmm. literally our outtakes and that is pretty much the video. We don't do many takes or, you know, nothing. So we like that element of surprise and real, and we try not to pre-tour stuff. Um, and yeah, so sometimes, and you know, I, I I was on the boat where the broker did us gave us a quick tour, and then I found an extra extra head, an extra toilet, an extra wow. bathroom. He didn't yeah. know existed. He didn't know it was there. That's fascinating. That is the see, broker that's what, listed that's what we mean. the boat. Yeah. I didn't know that it had whatever three hats instead of two wow. which is crazy i it was, had like, I was it had like a hidden door i it was, was like kind of like a hidden door yeah it's i was i was almost joking and exaggerating that you that you would find stuff the owner doesn't know is there but it's that's real yeah <laughs> we literally the did the tour i walked out and i said yeah. i found you another bathroom he starts laughing i said no really i did i found you one more he's like wow. oh oh that, there goes my <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> my little ears yeah. <laughs> that's okay i got them too that's why i got these big things on i need these can you get yeah. me these well that's kind of hard with both of us we gotta just sit like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys um, so mm -hmm. well speaking of storage i wanted to ask really quick for like uh somebody just getting into a live aboard Entry level. Entry level. Is that what it's Entry called? level. Sorry. Come I on, man. Get your lingo. I haven't gotten all the lingo down yet. <laughs> like, it, how important is it for an entry level uh, for, to have some a good storage? Um, is good storage a big problem when you're doing a, a smaller entry level type? Because obviously, I'm assuming it's not a big problem on those million dollar yachts and stuff like that. But like entry level, somebody just getting into it is a good amount of storage important. Well, it's, if you're going to live on a boat, right? So we have our affordable livable yacht series, which you guys have seen. Yeah. So if you're going to live on it, storage is super important mm -hmm. because if you're going to live and cruise, which is do any kind of, you know, not, it's so important because right. the boat, everything's built in. You cannot just add a dresser. I mean, most of the time you cannot. So it's a little different when you're coming into a bare apartment and you're like, okay, we'll do this. And then if it's missing, we'll add more. Like you don't have that luxury. It is built in. So you're dealing with what's given. So I think it is important. Depends on the climate too. And, you know, if you're, how far are you going to go with the boat? So I think um, you also carrying things on board that you don't normally would have in your normal apartment. You have safety equipment, which you don't normally have, you know, that just takes, yeah, you, yeah, you have, so much, yeah. if you have water toys, you know, you just stuff that you don't normally have. Um, you know, if you live in like a condo living, maybe mm, different sure. than a house, but yeah, I think starch is super, super important. Mm. And it's really funny because anybody we talk to who actually lives on the boat or, you know, other YouTube channels, you know, that, that live on board or just people with this experience, they all always talk about storage yeah. immediately. Sure. They don't think yeah. it's ridiculous at all. It's, um, it's people that, um, not quite, you know, quite sure what they want to do in the boating world. They usually complain. You're like, well, yeah. you know, right. you will know once you live on it, that you need it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a great, yeah. That's it's very yeah, important. It, it didn't occur to me that when you have, when you're living aboard, you, you, you have things like you just said that that you wouldn't have in an apartment. Sure. Like I'm probably not going to bring my my horror figure collection <laughs> that I have in my bedroom. I'm a little addicted to horror movies, but yeah, like that could probably you know, right be left at home. You're yeah. gonna need storage for that. That's, gonna, see, yeah, that's, that's important. It. Nobody right. will ever see it, but yeah, right. <laughs> it'll be there with you. But, yeah, it'll be. Yeah, I still also, have the collection. If you live in an apartment or in a house, uh, any any how re residential um, living unless you're moving you actually don't really realize how much 
stuff we all have um yeah. and just count paperwork text text uh, uh, papers i mean you know records like all the stuff uh, um which you maybe have in an office situation on a boat like unless you go to a very large boat you don't have an office like you need to right. find space where mm-hmm. you put it where you, you put your printer where do you put your i mean you know like all these things like so storage is super because everything is built in yeah. everything is built yeah. in exactly and it's Right. You know, most of Makes. the boats, which are more on the affordable side, they're made to spend maybe two weeks at a time or a weekend on it and not necessarily a full life. Yeah, right. Yeah, it yeah. makes perfect sense. It, you know, that leads me into the next question, too, because <clears throat> in watching your channel, uh, again, uh, we learn so much, really. I mean, it's it's educational and, and, and just enjoyable. It's such an easy watch because who doesn't want to, you know, see boats? And it's just a beautiful, you know. Uh, thing to see but i notice also that you guys do yachts that are you know a hundred thousand dollars all the way up to millions and millions of dollars and i think when people think yachts they automatically assume oh i have to be a multi-millionaire but you're yeah. bringing to the to the surface that you don't necessarily have to be a millionaire this is affordable yeah. and it, it again it's one of those things that I, I think I speak for a lot of people. People love about your channel, and we appreciate that. Um, and so, with that being said, what should somebody do? Do they start with you know an entry level, th- th- like despite money? What you know, if you have millions and millions of dollars and you can afford a big giant yacht, is it still not good to do that? Should you still kind of go in entry level just to you know adjust your life? <laughs> You want to answer? I don't know if we're the right people for this. I, yeah, I don't know either. Uh, it's, it's really funny that you're asking this question because I'm actually just helping a client of mine finding his first yard. And um, we're looking up all the way to 140 feet, uh, which is, you know, we're talking like eight, nine, 10 people crew. I mean, it's like a full blown business. Right. It, it's running like it, it's like running a company. Um but in general, for everybody who's, you know, not in that position and not as as motivated to go, that's more or less crazy. Um, I would say, like, yeah, start, start, uh, um, you know, kind of like getting getting certified, getting your bonus card, uh, which most of the states in, in the U.S. already now require for younger uh, people. And it, it's going to get phased in anyways for, for everybody to every age group at some point. Uh, maybe get uh, certified like sailing ASA or there's uh, there are different organizations which which do cer- sailing certifications. Get your feet wet, not literally, but um, yeah, that's <laughs> not good. Hopefully not. That's <laughs> where you're at. I, guess. But, uh, I mean, you know, learn the rules of the road. Like get familiar with the whole material and um, and start with whatever you can afford and then upgrade whenever you're ready to upgrade. I think that's how I would. Get, just get in. Just get in when and that's and probably get out. the most common question we get asked when we meet people at boat shows. Right. Um, you know, they just immediately ask us, like, hey, you know, what do I do? Do I wait for my dream yacht? Do I save? Right. Do I wait until I retire in five years and then sell my house? And mm-hmm. and I, I always say no, just buy what you can afford right now because that is not going to be your last boat. It's it's not. You will upgrade. That is a normal progression. Um, get what you can get right now. Um, even if it's a little bit of an older boat, but a better build, maybe get that and just learn, learn as much as you can. It's There is a definitely a learning curve. Buy smart, buy something that you're not like way over your head. Um, right. You know, sometimes we show older, like much older boats, which are a great deal and it's exciting, but it's also a challenge. So unless you are really hands on, you could be way, you know, way over your head. Mm-hmm. So I think just get what you can, what makes sense for what your uh, level of expertise with this, you know, and just get experience and then eventually you will upgrade and there is no such thing as perfect boat there it is doesn't it. exist it's like a perfect house it i don't think i mean we're, mm-hmm. we're building you guys know we're building yeah. a 75 foot explorer yacht right now yeah. and it is our dream boat at the moment it doesn't mean that it's going to be our dream boat in 10 years it's right now <laughs> that's what we consider our dream boat but there is no i mean as you're as you in this it all change life changes and i think just do it do it now mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. interested you don't know as covid showed us you don't know what life is going to be in two years so yeah. just right. you know just do it get a boat sure. you can afford and and start 
start living the lifestyle and it could be that it's not your liveaboard at first it could be a small right. boat or it could be that it is a liveaboard it just yeah. really depends on on what you can afford at the moment yeah that's funny because um i i would have completely disobeyed everything they just said <laughs> <laughs> because I, I i was trying to find the video last night so i could uh say the actual name of the app but i couldn't find it uh because i watched it like a month ago you guys went to one where the what's it called where the captain drives the boat uh pilot house, the pilot house? Fly, yeah. fly, the, oh the, pilot house pilot not the fly break. come on man i'm oh, sorry man um so in in that specific yacht and i really wish i could have found the bridge it, yeah, the bridge. The bridge. It yeah. had this big captain's chair and three or four beautiful Huge big screen. Garmin screens. <laughs> and I was like, if I ever get one, that's the first one I'm getting. As if I know what I'm going to crash. I'm not even going to be able to get it out of the marina because I, I, I can't. It was big. It was really big. So it's like, it's funny that I'm, I'm glad we asked you guys that because just in case oh, yeah. I ever were to buy a yacht. Uh, I'm not going to make that mistake because, of course, I go right for the one where I am overwhelmed. And it's like, oh, what's this do? I don't know. I, right. It's my yacht. See, I've, I've taught him well. I've, yeah. I've, I've, he's I my know, son, I by know. the way. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> it, it, to be honest with you, your, your, your Meridian boat, that's my dream boat right now. I, I, that's, that's what I want. It you was know? an I, awesome boat. We yeah. love that boat. It, yeah. it, it, it was Sad, very good to us. Sadly, they don't really build aft cabin motor yachts anymore. Um, mm -hmm. As far as I'm aware at least uh and, and it, i don't know when that stopped actually probably like 2011 12 or yeah, something I maybe so. yeah mm -hmm. uh it's well, just amazing how much how much space you get for the length of the boat with a right. huge aft bedroom you still have and then the big open concept in the middle um it's it's amazing yeah yeah it was a good boat we but, just but sold it like three weeks ago you so. did uh do you miss it yeah uh -huh. You miss it. I bet you don't miss the. Uh, I think it was time. You know, it was time, and it went to good people that oh, we knew, good. and yeah. you oh, know, it, uh, it, I bet it was you awesome. Don't, you don't miss the refrigerator, though. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of learned to live with it towards the end. It was, yeah. you know, it's not as I still didn't freeze ice cream, but yeah. I think, yeah. um, I think I'm excited for for you know for the new and and good yeah. fridges yeah a few oh. fridges yeah yes so, for sure yeah let's let's i want to talk a little bit about what you what you uh, originally said when i first answered the question as far as like credentials so correct me if i'm wrong because i just read this but uh victoria you're a uscg license captain are you still that or did you upgrade yeah we're both yeah we're both i mean it's um all the okay. captain's licenses in 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 the u.s are u.s u.s coast guard yeah okay um so yeah we both that just means a captain's license in the united okay. states okay. um yeah there are different kinds in different countries like you know britain has their own and you know mm -hmm. but for us it's u.s coast guard issues the licenses so we, we both are yeah oh, wow. because it's his he's tonnage a, is definitely a lot bigger than mine. <laughs> he's he Rico's two hundred GT Master Captain. Am yes, I correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so what right. what 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 is the difference between those two? You know, just you know, to the layman, you know, to our audience who you know who's probably just going to break into your channel. What what is the difference between those so two my, titles? So my my license is called OUPV, uh, which basically means that operator uninspected vessel. Correct. It means that I can transport up to six passengers. Paying, so paying, paying, passengers. paying passengers, paying passengers. Yeah. So it is really it co goes to a commercial. It really applies to a commercial world, which is like if we. Uh, transport for hire mm -hmm. so as a charter or as a taxi or however you know that there's really someone paid to be transported so mine is limited to six six paid passengers and i think 50 um, gross tons, and technically right? it's 50 gross tons yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and his is um 200, so 200 yeah. gross tons of tonnage and no limitation on amount of passengers. Gross tonnage doesn't refer to the weight of the boat. It actually is a completely different. It refers to enclosed cargo space. So it's coming right. from the Merchant Mariners world. Um, and it's just getting applied to ple pleasure crafts, uh, which is kind of like a little weird. But it, it, there is a formula how to calculate that. And it kind of works out. Mm -hmm. I want to add, so like you guys are captains just of varying degrees so like what would you know are we like just semen what what would what would what would we be no we be considered passengers no no if we had a rank if we had a rank yeah 
I, I don't know. I think you would be private, Pio. I don't know. What do you talk? What, what's the question? I, <laughs> Mike, what, what, what would we? I, you like, want a rank now? Yeah. He already wants a goes? rank. He doesn't even know how to row a boat. He wants a rank already. You know what? You're not allowed on my flybridge. <laughs> that's, yeah. You know what? You're not allowed in my salon. <laughs> yeah. you if know, you would apply even... for, for, for any <laughs> position, <laughs> if you would apply for any position on a, on a private yacht, uh, it would probably be deckhand. You would start as a deckhand. Deck. You're a deckhand. That's what, what, you, you, what do you think you are? You guys are in Europe right now. You're in Italy. Yeah, we're Correct. actually in Italy. Yeah. Yep. You're, in, you're in Italy, my homeland. Um, and uh, you were just recently in France. And uh, so tell us a little bit how it's going. Give us some European highlights. What's going on over there? A Can Yachting Festival, which is um, probably the largest Mediterranean um, boat show. Yeah. And uh, we're still here for a little bit. We have some meetings in Italy and we're going back um, to Monaco for the Monaco boat show at the end of the month. So we're spending pretty much a month um, here this year. Horrible. I know we've uh, we've been eating a lot of pizza and pasta in the last two days. <laughs> it's been amazing. It's actually my very first time in Italy. I have never been to Italy. Really? Do you like it? Um, love. I mean, love it. We. Yeah. I can't say that we've seen a lot of it yet. We've. Um, we've just been like just got there. in one area trying to get some some work done, but we've definitely been culinary experiencing yeah. it. And yeah. uh, oh my god, and I just feel like just the hole in a wall place, and the food is amazing. So the food is. Um, I think my expectations were pretty high, and I was afraid that I was going to get let down a little. But it is really, really good. So I. I'm just kind of blown away by Every, like, everywhere we go. We order like four main dishes and the waiter <laughs> or waitresses are looking at us like, are you guys sure you can eat that? We're going to take the rest home. Don't worry about it. Of course we are. <laughs> That's what I would do. Definitely. Oh, we're yeah. trying everything, yeah. like literally ordering way too much. It's, it's, hey, like that's the way to do it. <laughs> um, so as we mentioned, you guys, uh, we are dedicating this show to Marco. Um, Thank Unfortunately, you guys. thank you. Of course. Yes. Okay. So Margot is very important to us uh, as of course he he was loved so much by you guys. Um unfortunately, Marco did pass away a couple of months ago, right? 3 months ago around. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Yeah, he passed away on Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Um, yeah. Mother's Day. Yeah, right. you had so we, we're really sorry to hear that. Um but we want to talk about some good times with Marco on the boat. Like 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 Give us, give us like, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, what were some of the challenges or, you know, what was Marco's demeanor on the boat? Uh, how, how is it having a dog on a live aboard yacht? It's so interesting. Well, as you know, like dogs are, you know, like our kids, they, they have such different personalities. Uh, when Rico and I got together, I already had a dog. I had a Chihuahua mix and Oscar and you know he we ended up getting Marco together and it was a, a failed foster attempt <laughs> actually Rico Rico adopted him before even asking me I yeah. mean we I I thought he was great but you know he just when he's like oh, I adopted him already I was like yeah, okay. yeah this guy's not going anywhere he's gonna stay yeah. oh. <laughs> and uh, he was yeah so Oscar was 10 years old I think when we got Marco so he was mm -hmm. you know he was the only child for a long time was definitely, you know, he was with me, he was three months old and just uh, had a had a very different attitude about him. And Marco was just so happy to just be loved. I mean, he was just yeah. the oh. sweetest little guy. And um, we, you know, my Oscar was, I feel like it was a little spoiled in a way, you know, because he had so much attention and he just didn't, I feel like it was on his terms. Um, but with Marco, he was just so happy to just have a family, and you could tell he was sweetest, sweetest. Yeah, Oscar sweetest was an aristocrat, and uh, Marco was a village boy. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's pretty funny because on the boat, once we moved onto the boat, they were also different because um, Oscar was a total, total sea like wolf. sea wolf. He loved the boat. Anytime a boat took the boat out, he was standing there balancing and just like oh. loved it. And Marco was very sensitive. And when it got rough, he got seasick. He literally oh. gets seasick and he would throw up and it was just, you know, hard, not all the time, but it was for him. It was not, you know, it took 
time to kind of get used well, in the to the marina it. he loved it he loved the yeah. it's funny because he loved the the dinghy you know this the small boat the tender he loved that and didn't have any problems no nothing yeah he absolutely you know would just say like hey let's go for you want to go for a ride in a dinghy it was like going for a ride in a car he absolutely yeah. loved it yeah. but he got used to the boat life both of them it was oh, yeah, very time. easy mm-hmm. i think having a boat boat on a dog dog on the boat <laughs> <laughs> is um is pretty easy I think overall people are so worried, but I think dogs naturally adapt so easily to, mm-hmm. you know, or a cat for, you know, for that matter. Like, I think they, they do really well on a boat. They, um, they get used to it. They totally realize what's going on. Most of the time people go like, Oh my God, what yeah. if they fall out? Or what if they, I think know what's going on. They know yeah. their comfort zones and like how, where they can go and not. Um, our boat was very safe. It was like pretty much like child proof in the, the way that it was set up. Close, right? yeah. yeah, because they're so little. And that was part of the reason we liked that boat so much. But they also never, you know, if they didn't feel comfortable to go forward, like they won't. So mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like um, people sometimes they say like, oh, I have two dogs. I don't think I can do the the boat life. Right. I, I don't really see it being that much of a challenge. And, you know, they got trained really, really easily and yeah, like absolutely loved it. Doggy toilet trained. But mm-hmm. plenty of people have doggy toilets on their balconies or terraces. And then and when they work during the day, they leave the door open a little bit or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the most asked question on our most watched video, which is the tour of our boat is where does Marco go to the bathroom? Right. So there was another video that I made and I put a little piece in there because people just kept asking me that. And did actually, you even, didn't you film him? Peeing yeah, I actually him? filmed him. <laughs> of I course you did. Because people kept asking me like, how does it work? Yeah, so, and he, he did. That was just shocking, you know, I mean, uh, oh, it's hilarious. And now uh, he demonstrated for everybody. But yeah, he just, we had a little doggy toilet and they would, they were great. Both of them were really good going on it. So it was, yeah. it was pretty easy. Of course, it's harder with a larger dog, but you can still yeah. do it. I think it's mm-hmm. very much doable. Well, that's great because I would hate, it would, it would suck for somebody whose dream is to live on a yacht, but they think they can't because they have a dog. Yeah. Right. And so, right. That's, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, to add to Victoria, um, you know, people underestimate dogs and how intelligent they are. They, you know, most of the time they know Mm -hmm. that that's water. I'm not going to jump in there. You know what I mean? Um, So, yeah. uh, But yeah, it's important because, you know, we get a lot, you know, of course we work with dogs every day and um, you know, when people finally see this, that's, that's going to be one, you know, one of the main questions, of course, where do they go to the bathroom? Uh, All of that. Now, my other question is uh, when, when you guys are like docked or you're in the slip, right? Um, mm-hmm. Do you, do you also have a, a, a land, uh, you know, a, a house, a land house also, or are you just 100% on the boat? 100% on the boat. You were 100% on the boat. Okay. So um, my question would be, let's say, you know, there's a storm coming, you know, and maybe it's not, you know, a deadly storm or anything like that does the boat rock a lot i mean how do you how do you deal with that how you know how do the dogs deal with that do they get afraid i mean what, what, do you go not, on land not no? in the marina okay. if if you're tied up to the dock At least properly not in where we were like, yeah you know, the I mean, it's a huge marina yeah not um i mean it's, of course if you have um in florida and you have a hurricane come at you i mean that you have bigger problems yeah, um right but right. um in the normal setting that just because it's really windy you know you have 40 knot winds like it's it's fine the, I mean, we had some nights where it was pretty windy and the gusts were hitting the boat and yeah the boat it's it just a little, a little bit, bit but in the slip so it's, it's not it's very safe i don't think that do- our dogs cared at all no i think they were just like oh yeah let's no see. the usual fears i know fireworks and stuff like that but nothing yeah. really uh weather mm-hmm. related no I, okay. I i think not at all Marco did fall into the water once. Oh boy. Okay. He was trying Tell us. to get off the boat. Okay. Yeah. He was trying oh. to get off the boat and he jumped. He was always um kind of fearless when it came to anything, which is so funny because he was <sighs> sort of sensitive, but then fearless at the same time. Right. And so he would always jump from the dock onto the boat and then go up the stairs until he, you know, got older. But um one time we had um the boat were actually our boat got detailed so they they uh, moved the boat pulled it further away pulled it to one side so the with the normal gap was a lot wider than usual 
And obviously Marco didn't know that. Oh. And as he was getting off the boat, like I was coming down the steps and he was standing there like ready to jump. And one of my friends was standing on the dock already and both of us screaming at him, no, don't <laughs> jump. And <it's> like <laughs> he's close. standing there and just oh. jumps completely <laughs> submerges, uh, like in between the dock <laughs> and the boat. The and my friend get... immediately like pulled him out. And from that point, yeah, he, he, got, wasn't, he, wasn't he got jumping anymore, yeah. Yes, he got hesitant <laughs> to jump. Uh, sure. But yeah, yeah, that was definitely, you know, not not a fun experience mm. for him. But yeah, he's, he's not so, deckhand he's so little, status yet. You know, he's, he's not that he was a little guy. Yeah, he no, wasn't no, no. status. <laughs> well, he's got to get on my level. Yeah, but like he, Oscar he would never. It. Yeah, Oscar would never try it. You know, even right. though like, he, he would just be like, "I'm not even gonna attempt this." But Marco was always up for for trying stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah there. Um, you know, Oscar never had problems like that. Well, you know, they're they're creatures of habits. You know, he was. He was off a couple of feet. That's all. You know, he he did the right thing. Yeah, right? just a little. He just kind of, you know, tricked them a little bit. You know what I mean? But, Same thing would have happened to me, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, oh, you guys you, would have had to pull me out. Yeah, after, <laughs> yeah, after a couple of drinks, Anthony's in the water oh, automatically. Yeah. He's going to be in the water. That's why I don't want to get a boat yet, because we have to, you know, we have to figure you out, you know. I'll be fine. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll be in the fly bridge, the pilot, whatever, okay. whatever they said it's called. I forget. Yeah. Mm, listen, um, we <laughs> the bridge, <laughs> the bridge, the bridge. Exactly. See, that, just like I yeah. said, the pilot's right. bridge. Pilot's bridge. We're gonna listen. We're gonna test That's you. Cool. I mean, we're gonna retest oh. you because you know we, the 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 nautical language is a, a language in, in it's itself. Hard. You know, it's hard. It is difficult, but, but we're getting it. We're learning more and more. And you guys, if you guys want to learn more and more, please check out Victoria and Rico. Go to YouTube. And just search Naughty Styles. If you guys want to learn more about boats and yachts, these are the people to learn from. Trust me. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more to Victoria and Rico. Welcome back to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. We are your hosts. I'm Anthony Ray, hanging out with my dad, Rudy V. And we have our very special guests today, Victoria and Rico from Naughty Styles. Definitely go and check out their channel. If you're watching on YouTube, you can go right into the description and go and check out their channel. Show them lots of love, guys. We have become obsessed, basically, <laughs> with, oh, yeah. their, with their channel. We have been binge watching it for, for quite a while. So uh, as we said a couple of times in the show, this show is dedicated to Marco. They're a little, what is he, Chihuahua, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, he was, a, oh, he a, was a, a bundle of mixes, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a Chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it a Chihuahua. He was a, a bundle of joy. Um, uh, so this show is dedicated to him, and uh, I want to keep it on animals for one second. 
the whale kiss. This I, two years ago, you guys posted a video of kissing whales, and I was watching it last night. How was that? I'm so glad you're one of the very few that watched that <laughs> video that took me forever to put together, and it's one of my favorite videos on the channel. It's, it's amazing. Uh, that well, huh? yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. It's uh, we've done this three, three years times, in a row. Yeah. It is a true bucket list must yeah. must do in life. Uh, it is. I, I truly believe if you don't experience this, um, you you know, in your life you missing out on just the most incredible humbling experience yeah and um it is fantastic um it's basically well um, people can watch the video oh yeah you can watch the video <laughs> yeah don't no, um, there is a go no, watch don't click on it you guys there are a couple, name, there are a couple of, of like, and share definitely share yeah um you can uh, just post put kiss kiss a whale naughty styles and i'm sure it'll come up and search yeah. but yeah it's um it's basically a couple of lagoons in baja california that the gray whales migrate to and every year they make this one of the longest migration journeys of, babies, of any right? yeah any mammal and they have they have their calves their babies there and they raise them for a little bit there and once they're old enough to um to go back up to alaska they make that journey together um some don't make it and oh, it's cool. um, it is a really an incredible, um, incredible thing because you know up until 1975 we hunted them in those lagoons and pretty much drove them to extinction. There was less than 200 of them left, and uh, in 1975 we decided to uh, finally get our together and start protect them, and they literally came back so strong that um, there are over 23,000 now, which is wow. back to the original numbers. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they um, basically forgave us um, and mm. the, they're called the friendly gray whales of Baja because they're so, so friendly. And there's certain time of the year, it's only a couple of months a year, uh, basically January to about April, where they down there and they experience um you know, you can go and see a thousand whales in the lagoon, like literally 1000 whales all around. It's a huge lagoon with a little tiny portion that is highly regulated that mm -hmm. you can go well watch in. And um, Mexico does a great job of, you know, keeping this the way it is. And the whales are completely free. No one's chasing them. They come right up to you. It's an incredible experience. And the the moms, the you know, they push the babies up to the boats because they want them to interact with oh, you, wow. yeah. which is, I can't imagine many other experiences than maybe um, an elephant, you know, washing yeah. baby yeah. elephant experience, mm -hmm. which I, is on my bucket list, but um, to be so connected to such a creature that could destroy you in the moment, you know, just, just like that. It is, um, it's so humbling. It just, it makes, it makes you feel like, um, you know, the, the whole experience, the whole existence of our existence is just, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to no, describe I, that. It just makes you feel so small and yeah. so unimportant, yeah. you know, yeah. in the scheme of, of, it can, of life. It kind of like, oh, and also when we had our boat, we did, even in California, we did a lot of dolphin watching. Like California has such huge population of dolphins. Um, I think one of the top five or top three, uh, um, destinations in the world where the most co most concentration of dolphins are um, like when you do that in in real life in, in in the wild and and you interact with an, with a mammal on animal in general and you think of all these you know not naming too many names but um, or businesses which capture animals yes. and then have these crazy shows and Sure. Um, you kind of you kind of thinking like what are what are we thinking like why are, what are we, we doing, doing? this like sure. it's it, doing? it's it's all there like it, on their terms and yeah. it's way more beautiful than than any you know and, you know handstand and, and clap the wings kind of thing it's it's just so different right right watching them in their natural environment you know and, yeah. uh, again I, I i knew that you guys would be like perfect guests because we two are animal lovers and again yeah. just your your channel our channel it brings awareness you know it brings awareness to people and uh, again like it's just i agree with you 100% rico why not you know observe these beautiful gorgeous animals for what they truly are and not you know be like you said doing a circus act or anything like that yeah so uh, yeah yeah and we, it just we, shows you too it shows you if we really 
make effort and protect them that they can th uh, they can thrive and they you know they can they yeah. we can have this amazing interactions with them we don't need to do it any other way the, we are so powerful in our small way you know of yeah. of uh, creating this coexistence so yeah. it's uh definitely check out the video it's um i'm proud of it yeah, one one quick example of, of i don't remember which of the three trips it was i think it was the, maybe the last one or maybe the one before i'm not sure but um we had a juvenile whale which we named casper because he had so <laughs> many white markings on his body so he was more white than gray the friendly um, ghost <laughs> yeah the, the, the friendly ghost um so, so i mean he spent an hour an hour hour and a half next to our panga rolling i mean spraying us i had my whole hand inside of his mouth opening wow. opening his what mouth an experience. we could see his baleen we could touch his baleen scratching was, his tongue like it was just wow. crazy wow. completely mind-blowing that's, yeah, and yeah. he just didn't want to leave. You know, it yeah. just it it's it's amazing. He could have went anywhere. He didn't have yeah. to hang out with us. He yeah. just chose to hang out with us. That's so adorable. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm so glad I brought that video up because I could yeah. see now you need how to do this. Was. Yeah. You guys have to do it. You need okay. to do this in we your will, life. Will. Yeah. Will, whenever yeah. you whenever you decide to give us a call, maybe four we'll day go, trip. Maybe we'll go yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. Four oh, days. Four That's days. All of course. Yeah. Well, whenever we get a boat, we'll get lost. We'll need you anyway. Perfect. <laughs> no, no, you can go there with your you own boat. You can go with your own boat because you have it's regulated. To, yeah, you have to go with with well, the trip good. and stay in an eco camp, and then yeah. you go with their with the with the pungas with the local guys. to go do that. Oh but yeah, yeah it's, well, uh, you said in the video it's like cut off, right? Like, uh, yes, it's, it's it's an eco it's an ecosystem There's, itself. I think each boat can only stay two hours in. Ninety minutes. Ninety in, minutes. Sixteen well, boats at a time, and there's half. one operator that's allowed to come in with a bigger boat. The guests stay on board, and there's only mm -hmm. one boat. They anchor in the lagoon, and they're the only ones. So mm -hmm. you could do that journey, and that's like a longer trip. But if you know, if even for this kind of a quick four day experience, it's it, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. You yeah. you must you must do that. In your life. Pencil us in. We'll go with you. Yeah, we'll go let's do you. it. We yeah. need to plan Let's another it. trip. I think. Yeah, we do need to plan another trip. Yeah, yeah. Let us know if you yeah. plan it because we'll, we'll, I want to do that. That sounds amazing. Yep. Totally, will do. Yep. Again, guys, check out Victoria and Rico on uh, YouTube. Naughty Styles. They also have a new channel that you guys launched recently. Uh, Naughty Guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's so, n-a-u-t-i guys do not do the g-h that's something very different it's very <laughs> different so get that okay. that's, a whole, that's a whole but, different that's a whole different i'm sure we're sending website. a lot of views to somebody else <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what i meant in the beginning you know was, okay but maybe no. they're working hard for it too you never know hey listen yeah, I, you I, never I, know yeah, you know, know spread the love so, i think it's yeah, i think it's great advertising it is yeah it's it, yeah it's smart yeah. So where else can people find you? So you have your YouTube channel, you have your other, your second YouTube channel. You guys have Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Instagram. We have that, Naughty same, Styles. And, uh, same handles, Naughty Styles and Naughty Rico Guys. Stall, Rico, that's me. Rico Rocks mm -hmm. Stall um, is his Instagram with all his DJ stuff. And yeah, I mean, of course, Facebook and our website is NaughtyStyles.com. Mm -hmm. And we also have a nautical store that we're currently expanding with some cool merch and some cool naughty gear and that's shop naughty and the uti.com okay we're gonna post it all in the links yeah. anyway so you know in yeah. case you guys uh, want to click on good. it yeah yep definitely guys thank you thank so you we, we, we can't thank you enough this was Victoria so much Rico. fun thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show with us today thank you Mark. we had a we had a blast yeah thank you so thank much you, you guys so and yeah we. when you when you're ready for for the boat give us a ring maybe yeah. Rico can what, help you uh i might be able to help, help. you the the right now, boat i help think so the right boat i think so check Re the fuse box first we check the fuse <laughs> yeah. we check all that. ouch yeah. <laughs> he's like he's like the worst broker because he's literally like this is how his phone calls start he's like just gonna let you know now there's going to be a lot of boats. I'm going to say no to. I'm going to object to. <laughs> that, that's He's a like, I don't broker. want you to buy a crappy boat. There you so, go. but he, uh, he makes an effort. He's like, he, it's not, you know, brokering is not everything he does at all so he just uh, you know he's doing it kind of a almost like a passion project because yeah. people keep asking us yeah that's, that's pretty much the best description well, um me. yeah we also have a patreon which we do a whole bunch of extra content as well so a lot of our patrons are reaching out and like help you know help me find the right boat so he's yeah. been doing it but yeah he's up yeah. front and it's like you know i am going to be very harsh on this there's going to be good. certain brands i'm not going to be okay with and i'm just going to be very honest if i see a problem i'm going to tell you don't buy this boat yeah. 
So yeah, but definitely reach out to us when you guys are ready. We will. Of course, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thank you again so much. Yeah, thank we you so thanks guys. for having us. Oh, absolutely. Of course, anytime. Yeah, we, we we loved it. Yeah, yeah. So thank See you, you so later. much. So that's going to wrap up the show, guys. A big, big thank you again to Victoria and Rico for coming on. Don't forget to go down into the description if you're watching on YouTube. Check out all their social media links. Go and show them some love. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us, Grooming by Rudy. You can leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. We want to hear from all of you guys. You could also like Grooming by Rudy on Facebook. Follow Grooming by Rudy on Instagram and Twitter. It has been an absolute pleasure. As always, take care of yourselves and your pets. Um, mm -hmm. I also wanted to let you guys know the reason I'm not looking at you a lot is because I'm looking at our camera. Sorry if it looks like I'm being rude and ignoring everything that you're saying. I'm listening. Oh, we, just... we were we were a little bit offended, but thanks for yeah, clarifying yeah. it. See, I'm sorry. I you should it. let people See? know before next time. I know. Exactly. I really should. I, I, I was going to say before we started recording, but of course, you know, when my mic is constantly turning off while I, it's I, on. I apologize. He's so rude. <laughs> It's probably your dad sabotaging you anyways with the microphone. Yeah, exactly. He wants to make me look weak. <laughs> he wants to make me look weak. Unbelievable. I'm the deckhand. You're a passenger. I'm a deckhand. I'm yeah. part of the I'm part of what makes it go. Okay.